Hey, beautiful soul. Today, I want to talk to you about the idea of everyday brave. So we all know that it is brave to push them out of the way of a moving car or to run into a burning building. But what about the idea of bravery, not as like a one and done act, but what if bravery is this ongoing, constant day by day choice? Um, there are actually five types of brave that I want to talk to you about today. But if you are new, I am joyful medium Joy Giovanni, and I help people step out of overwhelm and into love uh, through one on one mediumship or psychic readings, also through teaching and coaching. Um, and I really am so excited about this topic of bravery. So for me, the way I see bravery is love in action, love for others and also love for ourselves. So let's talk today about how we show up as brave for ourselves and others every day. And remember, brave doesn't mean fearless. Brave means full of fear, but moving in love and integrity and choosing to continue to step forward. Um, now I have some notes I'm working off of uh, just because I want to get all this in for you guys. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines brave as having or showing mental or moral strength to face danger, fear, and difficulty. But it also lists bravery as a verb and a noun. So it's not just an adjective. And with these five types of bravery, I want you to know we all fit into each of these categories in some way and to some degree, but you may notice that with yourself, some of these areas resonate more than others. I like to think of it almost like different percentages that we display of these, and I'm excited to talk to you about them right now. So what are the five types of brave? The first type of brave is physically brave. So this is taking action despite fear of the real possibility of physical harm. So this is like a first responder, um, or it actually reminds me of this uh, reading that I had recently with a firefighter in the spirit world, and he shared details about running into burning buildings and the smoke inhalation and the actual fear of um, you know, loss of life and that the, the bravery, I guess, of needing to potentially save people that could be trapped inside, save fellow um, fire workers, really just takes over and steps in front of the fear. It's not that the fear goes away. It's just that this bravery leads the way. So with physical bravery, we're talking about, like I said, first responders, firefighters, police officers, nurses, people that really are putting themselves in the possibility of real physical harm's way. And some people make this a part of how they express in the world every day. If, if you have a job like this, for example, you are having this physical bravery as a part of your identity in the world, as a part of your day-to-day -day job. But for others of, the, of us, you may only jump into physical bravery to push someone out of the way of a falling tree limb, for example, or um, to save a terrified dog who's run out into the middle of traffic. That would be a sign of physical bravery. So for some of us, we're only jumping into physical bravery because of immediate need, whereas others really present and identify with this in the world. Uh, so that's type one. Type two, ethically brave. Now, this is feeling compelled to stand up or speak out for what is moral, human, the right thing, even when, and often when, to be quite honest, um, doing so is really unpopular or even dangerous. This is activists, people who want to fight for the underdog, stand up for change. Um, this can be in really big public ways that we can demonstrate this. Uh, for example, um, the example that came to my mind was the Greenboro sit-ins, uh, the civil rights protests that started in 1960 when young African-American students staged sit-ins at segregated Woolworth's lunch counters in Greensboro, North Carolina, and they refused to leave after being denied service. So they sat there. It was it's kind of peaceful protest, but this is ethical bravery. And the movement did end up spreading all over the South and many protesters were like arrested and, uh, you know, brought in with charges of disorderly conduct or trespassing or even disturbing the peace when they were sitting very peacefully. But their actions made immediate and lasting change, forcing this company, Woolworths, um, who's like a drugstore back in the day, and other similar establishments to change 
their rules, to change, um, you know, their segregation policies. And we still see the effects of this today. So that is a really you know, powerful show of ethical bravery. Um, but it doesn't always have to be a big public display like that. In day-to-day -day ways, it shows up in our lives often um, ethically brave as respecting someone's proper pronouns, for example, or even being courteous enough to ask their proper pronouns, or if we're talking about their spouse, making sure we're asking, you know, what the proper pronouns are that they might like to be referred to. This is a small, I mean, not small, not in size, but small as in maybe like how far out on this limb are we putting ourselves? But for some people that might feel really challenging to, to step into their ethical bravery in that way. Um, it could also look like something as simple as going back into a restaurant because you realize that your server gave you the wrong amount of change and you know that they might, you know, maybe they might get in trouble, who knows, but that's an ethically brave thing to do, going in and just even being honest in that way. Um, so it can look it can look like that. It doesn't always have to look like public protest. Now the third kind of brave I wanna talk about today is emotionally brave. This is feeling even when feeling is hard. It is talking about your challenging emotions in an honest way instead of retreating or putting up a wall. Um, it is, uh, for example, celebrating a promotion that your friend got even when she got the promotion and you didn't, for example. So if you've got something really hard going on, being emotionally brave enough to still celebrate the other person, it could look like that. Um, holding joy and disappointment at the same time in that situation, that's emotionally brave. It could also look like someone who is starting to date again after healing from a divorce because to love is brave. It feels vulnerable often. Um, it feels exposed, especially emotionally. So that's emotionally brave. Or I had a client recently, uh, just this last week, who is in the process of helping a parent transition into the spirit world, into the next part of their life. And with this client in particular, they had to sit and quietly hold space for their loved one while they were grieving about this terminal ill diagnosis of their loved one, very progressed terminally ill diagnosis, and their loved one was also grieving. There were no words to be said. There was nothing helpful to say. Um, it was just sitting and holding quiet space for this loved one to process this, where the air was just filled with only emotions and no words at all. That is emotionally brave. Now, the fourth kind is socially brave. On a public limb, usually situation-based, and it is stepping out of your comfort zone uh, in front of others in a way that leaves you vulnerable to judgment or scrutiny or embarrassment or discomfort in some way. Now, this can look like anything from having to lead the team meeting at work that day, right? That's a little bit socially brave. You're, you're putting yourself out there as this leader or person of authority in front of a team at work. Um, it can also look like something like going to dinner with a group of friends after you get a new dramatic haircut. That feels really brave. You could be open to judgment, to scrutiny, you're in a social situation, so that's socially brave. Um, it could also look like going to a grocery store for someone that has social anxiety, for example. That's a really brave and hard feeling thing to do with someone for someone with social anxiety, to just go to the grocery store, putting themselves out there in a situation that involves others feeling out on a public limb. And like I said, it's usually situation based. So that is socially brave. Now, the fifth kind I'm really excited about. So we've gone through the, the top four kinds already. Physically brave, ethically brave, emotionally brave, socially brave. And number five is spiritually brave. That means engaging in the journey of personal evolution, examining, evaluating, and really just evolving your understanding of things like higher power, um, the still small voice. Sometimes that's also called the voice of our intuition or the voice of God within. Those universal spiritual truths and your own relationship with faith. Some people also treat this one like a one and done. You know, maybe they were 
um, adopting a belief system that was just passed on to them by their family of origin or the place that they lived. Maybe everyone, you know, was Catholic, for example. So they just adopted these beliefs, not really putting them to the test themselves or evaluate or even engaging with these beliefs in in an active way. Um, so it could look like something like that. Uh, really, to be spiritually brave, you have to be open to evolving as you unfold. Maybe the beliefs that you held when you were a child in whatever system you were brought up, and maybe those stand true as you evaluate them, and maybe some of them grow or shift or evolve like we're talking about. It takes bravery not only to ask those bigger questions about life purpose, death, connection, God, or the idea of a higher power, but it also takes bravery to be willing to go on the journey to uncover the answers because it, it often means that you'll be changed in some way. Um, I feel like it's changed for the better, but changed nonetheless. And that's where that bravery comes in, right? Um, at the very least, spiritual bravery requires self-examination, looking in that mirror of self, and that can be uncomfortable sometimes. Personal development, like we do in the Goddess Untamed program that I teach, um, is an example of this type of bravery. Really just being with those emotions, those um, spiritual questions and how we relate to them, how they resonate with us or don't resonate with us, our own personal experiences and how they show up in our world, but really wanting to engage with it in a way that we are unfolding what these bigger truths are. Um, what these bigger understandings of higher power, faith, relationship, life purpose, death, those things, what that means to us in our personal world. So that's a really brave thing to do. That's spiritual bravery. Now, it's important to note that one type is not ranked higher or better than another. All are equally crucial for our lives. And as a society, we need people who have their strengths in different ways types of brave, different brave types. We need those first responders. We need those social, um, socially brave activists. We need people who are emotionally brave, spiritually brave, um, you know, uh, ethically brave, socially brave, physically brave. We need it all. And we each have these types within ourselves in different percentages, different amounts. Um, so one's not necessarily bigger, better, more, more valid, more valuable than the rest. They're all so important. Um, and I also have a little asterisk in here that I just wanted to say, you know, I don't necessarily believe in using labels that keep us in a box, for example. However, when we are doing personal development or spiritual development, certainly these categories can help us. Um, they've helped me, you know, more deeply understand myself. So these categories can help you more deeply understand yourself. Where are your strengths than showing up? Where are you more resistant to showing up in a brave way? That's how these categories can be used with love. So we're not using them to put ourselves in a box, but we're using them to love ourselves and others more deeply and more completely. Um, and, you know, I just want to challenge you um, to really just spend some time with this. What types of brave can you identify in your day-to-day -day life? And where might you be being called to express more uncomfortable bravery? Speaking up for others, maybe more ethically brave, um, socially brave, maybe putting yourself out there as the person to lead the meeting or the person to give the talk or for the Modern Mystic Healers program, uh, putting yourself out there to lead the guided meditation maybe in our scenario. Um, so maybe it looks like that where you're being called to just be a little bit more. Maybe it's being more emotionally vulnerable probably for all of us. Um, I, so I'm just inviting you to sit with these types of bravery and allow yourself to be open to, to not only demonstrating more brave, but also to acknowledge yourself for the ways that you already are showing up as brave. Maybe for you, it feels really brave to just have to go into the grocery store. You know, I know I've had that experience myself um, with COVID and all the things we've been going through. So not just to look at, look at yourself, look at things critically to, okay, where can I be showing up more brave or what do I need to be doing more of, but also to celebrate yourself for the ways that you are already showing up as brave in your world. So I'd love it if you would share an example in the comments so I can celebrate your brave.
If you'd enjoy this talk today, I would love it if you would like, subscribe, and um, also if you want to be a member of the Joy Soul Spa Facebook group, they receive this talk live before you guys even. So it was so great to be with you today. And let me know which type of bravery, which style of brave resonates with you the most and which style of brave res resonates with you the least. I'd love it to celebrate you in the comments. I will see you so soon. Be brave, beautiful soul. Bye for now.